Honestly, the prologue and the broad backstory of the play was most interesting to me. I find Greek mythology very interesting, and like that's why I'm taking a classical mythology course right now, and the story kind of fits my interest. And it was also interesting that the protagonist, Dionysus, appears mostly in disguise as a stranger. I thought that his like powers of manipulation, knowledge, and sacrifices kind of like can be really glued to the page. And like I thought this was shown through the mother of Pentheus uh, being manipulated into taking the own head of her son, only being hit with reality when she states, what I see fills me with such horrific pain, such agony. The way in which he is able to manipulate women and escape imprisonment is unbelievable also. And not only does he possess divine power, but I thought it was also interesting and like kind of cool throughout the pay that he was so cunning and wise. I also believe Pentheus's fate is kind of foreshadowed very early in the play when Tiresias warns Pentheus not to offend the gods or he will suffer the same fate as Actium. It is kind of conflicting to me that like Dionysus though wishes to demonstrate that he was born a god but chooses to do so by resembling a human through all these cunning ways. I think this kind of contributed to the concept of like duality that the playwright exemplifies throughout the play. This is uh, shown because Dionysus takes two forms, Pentheus soars as a double, and they even like switch roles in the course of the play. It also contributes to a motif of disguise being Dionysus as a stranger and Pentheus as a female pocket. The two values I think that were exemplified through the play were madness and revenge, or values and concerns, priorities, whatever. I think madness is presented through Tiresias attempting to make Pentheus see how irrational or mad his reasoning is. This is when she states, yeah, in your words, there's no real sense, wretched man, how ignorant you are of what you're saying. You are raving mad. On the other hand, I think that revenge is also a priority and value throughout the play, obviously, because Dionysus takes after the death of his mother and his banishment, like kind of takes on a revenge to her. And the chorus attempts to justify revenge, shown when they say, what fair gift from the gods in men's eyes than to hold the hand of power of the head of one enemies. So like on a different note, I think that the menids are depicted as a possessed group of women. And I think Pentheus compared to other people kind of scolds them harshly and sees this as like a drunk, drunken act or lame way to escape the moral laws of Theban society. And I think this is proven like when he states, uh, the messenger states to Pentheus, they weren't as you described, all drunk on wine. So Pentheus kind of pure anger and hatred towards them and these women kindly kind of suggests that in Greek society maybe women had no political say or like no rights and that they kind of were basically controlled by men and the words I had to look up during my time during reading was thyrsus which I came to understand is the staff carried by Dionysus and his followers and I also had to look up the word thong from throng from learn or line 117 which he uh, states a throng of woman born, which is just basically a large pack of women. So uh, when reading the play and wondering why the Elvis was the cover, I couldn't honestly come with the logical ex ex exclamation, but when I looked stuff up online and get got to researching, I found out it was because just like uh, Dionysus and Elvis, they both had a large following of women and kind of made them go crazy or wild the woman. And the questions I had about the play are why does Dionysus appear to Pentheus as a bull? Like what is the significance of Dionysus dressing Pentheus up as a woman? And like finally, through research I found like Dionysus is a god of theater and like what is the significance of this?